This National Healthcare Safety Network, or NHSN, Hot Topics focuses on patient safety analysis with new and updated analysis items introduced to NHSN reporting in January 2015. These updates are done in alignment with updated NHSN protocols for 2015, as well as new and updated Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, quality reporting program requirements. Each update is described briefly. Please visit the NHSN website to view the full protocol. The first update to patient safety analysis is related to the device-associated module. With the new release of NHSN version 8.3 in 2015, five output options that appear in the All Device Associated Events Output Options folder are retiring. These are Line Listing All Device Associated Events, Frequency Table All Device Associated Events, Bar Chart All Device Associated Events, Pie Chart All Device Associated Events, Rate Table All Device Associated Data. We strongly encourage the use of event-specific output options for those accustomed to using the All Device Associated Events set of output options. We understand that some may use the All Device Associated Events output options in order to see all related data in a single report. Custom output sets can be created so that multiple output options are included in a single run of a report. Instructions for creating a custom output set are available on the Analysis Quick Reference Guide webpage. A second update is that in January 2015, the CMS Inpatient Prospective Payment System, or IPPS, reporting requirements for CLABSI and CAUTI are expanding into select ward locations. That is, in addition to reporting CLABSI and CAUTI data from all adult, pediatric, and neonatal ICUs, IPPS hospitals are required to report CLABSI and CAUTI data from adult and pediatric medical, surgical, and med surge wards. The requirement to report from ward locations is limited to those locations that are mapped as, or defined as, CDC adult and pediatric medical, surgical, and med surge wards, listed in the table on this slide. Therefore, any unit that meets the definition of, and is mapped as, a specific type that is not an ICU, NICU, or one of the six wards listed above, is not required for CMS IPPS reporting in 2015. An example would be locations mapped as an orthopedic ward, telemetry ward, or step-down unit. In order to accommodate the expanded CMS IPPS reporting requirements, the related standardized infection ratios, or SIRs, for CLABSI and CAUTI data is updated in the following manner. One, beginning with 2015 first quarter data, the overall SIR table in each output represents adult, pediatric, and neonatal ICUs, plus adult and pediatric medical, surgical, and med surge wards. Two, a new second SIR table is added that includes only adult, pediatric, and neonatal ICU data. A third update, CLABSI, CAUTI, and ventilator-associated pneumonia, or VAP, rate tables are updated so that the NHSN pooled means and percentiles represent the data summary for 2013. The new pooled means for long-term acute care hospitals, or LTACs, and inpatient rehabilitation facilities, or ERFs, is used as the baseline data for new SIRs for these facility types. 
Additional details are described later in the presentation. Pooled means for VAP are only provided for select pediatric ICU and NICU locations. CLABC SIRs for acute care hospitals continue to use a baseline of 2006 to 2008 national data, and county SIRs for acute care hospitals continue to use a baseline of 2009 national data. In order to assist NHSN users with determining which lab ID events are included in the various inpatient facility-wide rates and SIRs, indicator variables for all lab ID events are added. Each indicator variable will begin with FW and is given a value of 1 if that lab ID event would be included in the FAC-wide count, as described in the example on this slide. Beginning in 2015, NHSN allows for central line insertion practice, or CLIP, bundle adherence when there are contraindications in patients less than 120 days of age at the time of insertion. This change is being made to address updates to chlorhexidine gluconate product labeling, which states, use with care in premature infants or infants under two months of age. These products may cause irritation or chemical burns. NHSN is utilizing 120 days rather than 60 days as the cutoff in order to account for clinician concerns about extremely premature infants whose skin continues to be very sensitive. The items shown in the table on this slide are considered appropriate skin prep for NHSN CLIP documentation. If the patient's age is the reason for not using chlorhexidine gluconate, or CHG, contraindication to CHG must be reported as yes in order to be adherent to the skin prep element of the NHSN CLIP bundle. The CLIP analysis datasets and output options are updated to allow for the new skin prep rules when determining NHSN CLIP bundle adherence. This is a temporary modification to address the change in product labeling. A permanent modification to this update is planned for 2016, such that it will be applied when entering events. Additional details regarding the changes to the CLIP output options will be provided in early 2015. New analysis output options are available that are specific to antimicrobial resistance data. These reports allow users to view and analyze antimicrobial resistance from device-associated and procedure-associated HAIs. Predefined phenotypes are included in the output, for example, MRSA and CRE. However, users can modify the output as needed to define pathogens and drug susceptibilities that are of interest to them. Other new output options include a line list and frequency table available to analyze event level data with resistant or non-susceptible pathogens reported for these select HAIs. In addition, a rate table displays the percent of all pathogens that tested resistant or non-susceptible to the applicable drug. New reports are built to align with the CDC's Targeted Assessment for Prevention, or TAP, strategy. The TAP strategy allows for the ranking of facilities or units within facilities in order to identify and target those areas with the greatest need for improvement. These new output options, referred to as TAP reports, are available for facilities and groups and generated for CLABC, CAUTI, and FAC-wide in CDI lab ID data. Detailed documentation and training on how to interpret and use these reports will be available in early 2015. New output options are added so that LTACs are able to run CLABC and CAUTI SIRs and ERFs are able to run CAUTI SIRs. Each of these SIRs uses the 2013 device-associated pooled means as the baseline. 
These SIRs are available as new standard reports in the Device Associated Module Output Options folder, as well as in the CMS Reports folder. Acute care hospitals with a CMS ERF unit will need to run the ERF-specific CAUTI SIRs, as these data are not included in the original CAUTI SIR output options. New analysis reports are available for LTACs and ERFs that are reporting C. difficile and MRSA bacteremia lab ID events as part of CMS quality reporting programs. These reports consist of a single facility-wide incidence rate and are available for 2015 first quarter data and forward. Incidence rates include incident, hospital onset, lab ID events identified in patients with no lab ID events in any location in the previous 14 days, divided by the total applicable number of patient days. The new CMS reports are located under the appropriate folder within the CMS Reports Analysis folder. For CMS ERF locations within an acute care hospital, a location-specific incidence rate table is displayed in this report. Finally, due to the redefined all-inclusive reporting for CRE in 2015, output options have been added. Users can generate reports for each type of CRE, as well as for all three CREs combined. These options for lab ID and infection surveillance include the standard reports, lineless, frequency tables, rate tables, bar charts, and pie charts. This concludes the NHSN Hot Topics updates focusing on patient safety analysis. Additional resources can be found on the NHSN website, the Analysis Quick Reference Guide webpage, and in the CDC locations and descriptions for mapping patient care locations. For additional questions about these changes, please contact NHSN User Support at nhsn.cdc.gov.